Hey everyone, welcome to TechWide. In this video, we are going to solve problem number 2187, minimum time to complete trips. First, we will see the explanation of the problem statement, then the logic and the code. Now let's dive into the solution. Here I have taken the first example from the LeetCode website. So we are given an input array of time and this time are corresponding to the ith bus. So bus 0 will take time 1 to complete one trip, right? And so on. Then we have total trips where this is the number of trip at least each and every bus should complete, right? So we need to find the minimum time required for all the buses to at least finish the total trips, right? So we are going to solve this problem using binary search. Now we will see how we are going to do this. So initially my left pointer will be 0. Then I will take the right pointer as the worst case answer possible for the particular input. So I will calculate the worst case answer by, by taking the minimum in my time array that is 1, the minimum value is 1, right, in the input array, multiply by the total trips 5 plus 1. So I'm going to get 6, right? So this will be the worst case answer for my input. So I will make 6 as my right pointer. Then I will find the middle value using the left and right value. So if I add left and right value, I'm going to get 6. 0 plus 6 is 6 and I will divide by 2. So I'm going to get 3, right? 3 is my middle value. Basically what we are trying to do is, we are trying to find the minimum time required to complete at least total trips. That answer will fall within the range 0 to 6. Right, So we are going to use the middle value as the initial value to check whether it is the minimum number of required time. So to check whether my middle value is the required minimum number of time, I'm going to use a function called check status. So this check status function will tell me whether I need to move to my left part of my range or I need to search in the right part of my range. So we will try to move the left and right pointers using the check status function. And if you found the required number of time, minimum time, we are going to come out of the loop. So initially I'm going to send the middle value to my check status, that is three. So check status three will be the expected time. So we are just assuming this is the required time we are just assuming this is the answer right but we are going to check whether this is the right answer or not so within this function i have a count variable that is initialized as zero so first i will pick the first time that is one i will divide the expected time that is three with one right with one the current value I will get 3, right? I will add this to my count variable. Count will be 3 now, right? I will pick the next value that is 2. I will divide the expected time with this 2. This expected time is nothing but the middle value that we have found at the start. So we are going to get 1 here. I will add this 1 to my count. So I'm going to get 4 now. So then I will pick the next value that is 3. I will divide the expected time 3 with the current value in time that is 3. So I'm going to get 1 again. I will add 1 to the count. My count will be 5 now. Right? I'm done with the input array time. So now I need to check whether I was able to complete the total trips 5. Right? If I was able to complete I will make the expected time as the current answer. So 
we are going to check whether we are able to complete the trip, total number of trip at least. So we are basically checking whether we are able to complete the total trips at least. If this condition is satisfied, then I will make the expected time 3 as my current answer. So my here I have an answer variable. I will make the expected time as the current answer. So in this case, we have 5 that is greater than or equal to 5. Total trips is 5 as well. Right? So which means I was able to complete at least total trips. So first we are calculating the total time taken by each and every bus and using that we are checking whether we are able to complete the total trips. Right? If we are able to complete at least the total number of trips we are going to make the expected time as my current answer that is true then I will return negative 1 which means I will make the right pointer as my current middle value. So here I will return minus 1. I will make the right pointer as the current middle value. Right? Now again I need to find the middle value here. I will get 1. So 1 is the middle value. I will send middle value as my current expected time. That is 1. So now I will take the expected time that is 1 then take the first value in my input array that is 1 I will divide that with the expected time I'm going to get 1 again I will add this 1 to my count variable so my count will be 1 now then I will take the expected time again then I will divide the expected time with the next value that is 2 I'm going to get 0. So it will just be as 1. Then I will pick the next value that is 3. If I divide 1 by 3, I'm going to get 0 again. So count is not going to change. It's going to be 1 again. Now I will check whether I was able to complete the total, at least to total trips. So we have 1. And we need to check whether it's greater than or equal to my total trips. That is 5. No, it's not. We are not able to complete at least the total trips. So I will return 1. So which is an indication that I need to move my left pointer as my middle value. So now I will make my left pointer as the middle value. Right? Here I have missed. So I will write it again. I will make the answer as the expected time. And I will return an indication of minus 1 which, which means I need to move my right pointer. So I will run the loop for the binary search until my left pointer is less than the right minus 1. Right? So here we have left as 1, right minus 1 will be 2. So we will run the loop again. So I need to find the middle value. So I am going to get the middle value as Two. right now I will send this 2 to my check status function so my expected time will be 2 now so my count will be 0 at the start so I will pick the expected time that is 2 and I will divide with each and every value in my input array that is first is 1 so I'm going to get 2 I will add this 2 to my count right then I will take the next value that is 2. If I divide the expected time with the current value 2, I'm going to get 1. I will add. So I'm going to get my count as 3. Then I will pick the next value that is 3. I will divide the expected value with the current value 3 from my input array. I'm going to get 0. I will add 0 to the count. So count is not going to change. It's going to be 3 again. Now I need to check the conditions. If my count is greater than or equal to my total trips, that is 5. No, it's not. So I will return 1. If I return 1, which means I need to move my left pointer as my middle value. So this is my 
left pointer now. Now I will check whether my left pointer is less than the right minus 1. So here we left is 2, right is 3 and minus 1 will become 2. So this condition fails. I will come out of the loop and I will return answer 3. Now let's see the code. So before we code, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, please like and subscribe. This will motivate me to upload more videos in future. And also check out my previous videos and keep supporting guys. First, I'm going to have the left pointer as 0. And my right pointer will be the worst case answer by taking the minimum from my input array time. I will multiply by total trips. Right. Then I will add 1. This will give me the worst case answer then i will have a variable answer to return my answer then i'm going to have a while loop where my left pointer should be less than the right minus one All right then i'm going to find the middle value that is left plus right divided by two then i'm going to check the status whether I need to move my right pointer or my left pointer by passing the mid value. If the status is 1, I'm going to move my left pointer as the mid value. Else, I will move my right pointer as the mid value. So basically, if I move the left pointer, we haven't found the minimum required time, right? Then finally, I will return the answer variable. So now we will write the function, Let's check status function. So I will pass the mid value, which is the expected time. I will keep it as et. Then I'm going to have the count variable, which is initialized as zero. Then I will pick each and every time from my input array time. I'm going to add count by taking the expected time divided by the current time from my input array time. Then I will check if the count is greater than or equal to my total trips. That is, I have completed the total trips or not. I'm just checking whether I have. I was able to complete the at least the total trips if that's satisfied then i'm going to have my answer as the expected time so the expected time is the answer then i'm going to return minus one then if we aren't able to complete the total at least the total number of trips we need to return one right we need to return one right also we need to make the answer variable as the non-local variable right i think it's fine let's run the code as you guys see it's pretty much efficient and the time complexity will be the n log m where n is the number of times we iterate to the input array and log m is the binary search right and space complexity is order of one since we are not using any extra space thank you guys for watching this video please like share and subscribe this will motivate me to upload more videos in future and also check out my previous videos keep supporting happy learning cheers guys